Thanks to the photo leaked by Moore's Law is Dead, now we know for sure that Nvidia is working on RTX Titan and has fully functional prototypes in the lab. This new Titan is based on the same Ada Lovelace architecture found in the recently launched RTX 4090 and 4080 graphics cards and is designed to deliver unrivaled performance, untouchable by the competitors. In this video, I will tell you everything I know about the RTX Titan, including its performance in games, compared to RTX 4090, RX 7900 XTX and other currently available graphics cards, as well as its specs, possible release date and price. But first, a quick message from my favorite sponsor. Buy your Windows 10 or 11 key for less from cdkeyoffer.com at the link in the description below. Use code IV20 to get a 25% discount that brings the price down to as low as $16. You can securely check out with PayPal and receive your Windows key in minutes, ready to be activated on your PC. Now back to our topic. First, I want to show you what kind of performance the new RTX Titan would be able to offer and then explain why this level of performance is possible when we discuss its specs next. On average, RTX Titan has the potential to be around 15% faster than RTX 4090, leaving the most powerful AMD's GPU, RX 7900 XTX, far behind. And here is what that would look like in some of the games we know. Titan may achieve 95 FPS average in Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K resolution with graphics on high quality preset. Easier to run AAA games like Halo Infinite would be running at above 144 FPS average, which means that you would be able to enjoy this kind of titles on a 4K 144Hz screen utilizing its high refresh rate capabilities to the max. And if you are wondering about competitive gaming on a 4K 240Hz monitor, then Titan would be very close to bringing that experience in Rainbow Six Siege on very high preset with 228fps average. Lowering a few graphics settings would allow to max out that 240Hz monitor. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is one of the very few games where AMD's RX 7900 XTX is actually faster than RTX 4090. The Titan would retake the crown with around 210 FPS average at 4K resolution even in this title. Actually, Modern Warfare 2 is the perfect example of what Nvidia's CEO Jensen Huang wants to see in every benchmark chart even the ones so heavily favorable towards AMD graphics cards. Titan would humiliate the competition claiming the performance crown in every game. But to get there, RTX Titan must be spec'd out accordingly in terms of hardware. Let's analyze how Nvidia can achieve this goal. Right now, there are a couple of things we know for sure about the new RTX Titan. The prototypes in Nvidia Labs look like products that are good enough for retail. What I mean is that at least visually the RTX Titan Founders Edition cooler quality is very close to what we see on the retail versions of RTX 4090 and 4080 Founders Edition in the shops right now. So it does not look like an early prototype, which means that it is highly likely that Nvidia is close to ready to manufacture the Titan, that is, if they want or need to launch it of course. If AMD manages to fix the performance problems in their RX 7900 XTX flagship card and it gets close to RTX 4090 in gaming benchmarks, then Nvidia will most definitely launch either an RTX Titan or RTX 4090 Ti to assert its market dominance. Most recently, we have seen the same behavior from Nvidia when they launched RTX 3090 Ti to counter AMD's RX 6950 XT, which has surpassed RTX 3090 in terms of performance in games. Another thing that we know for sure is that RTX Titan has a different cooler than the one found on RTX 4090. 4090 takes up three slots in the PC case. It is capable of cooling a 450W TDP GPU and weighs almost 2.2 kilograms. That is about 4.8 pounds. 
However, the RTX Titan is on a completely different level of huge. It takes up 4 slots in the PC. I estimate that it is capable of cooling a 550 to 650 watt GPU as easily as RTX 4090 Founders Edition cooler manages with 450 watts. As for the weight, I estimate that it is close to 2.8 kilograms. That is over 6 pounds. You definitely need some sort of a GPU support device to hold that much weight in order to stop it from breaking your motherboard. The new Titan is likely to have a 550 to 650 watts TDP. To deliver this amount of power safely, this thing is equipped with not one, but two 16-pin power connectors. Since currently there are no power supplies that offer two 16-pin power connectors, and very few offer 8 or more 8-pin GPU power connectors, Nvidia will likely bundle the Titan with two 16-pin adapters, which split into three 8-pin connectors. This adapter is good enough to power a 320 watt RTX 4080, so two should be okay to power a 600-ish watt Titan. That would bring the total number of required 8-pin power connectors to six which is manageable on most high-end power supplies. Apart from increasing the power consumption to boost the performance, Nvidia has plenty of other levers to pull in order to achieve that 15% or higher increase versus RTX 4090. The most obvious improvement would be to use 24 gigabit per second GDDR6X memory instead of 21 gigabit per second found in 4090 to increase bandwidth by 14% and Titan will have 48 gigabytes of memory, no doubt about it. Finally, Nvidia can cherry-pick the perfect chips. Here is how it works. RTX 4090 uses AD102 chip. The full AD102 has 18,432 CUDA cores. However, if you look at the RTX 4090 specs, you will notice that it says 16,384 CUDA cores. Why? Well, not every chip comes out perfect out of the factory. Some have defects and parts of the silicon have to be disabled to make the chip work properly. It is a normal procedure in chip production, hence why we get less cores in RTX 4090. Because it uses cut-down AD102 chips that were not good enough to become a more expensive product such as this $7,000 RTX 6000 Ada graphics card for data centers, which features 18,176 CUDA cores. That is 11% more cores than in RTX 4090. It is likely that Nvidia will use the same 18,176 CUDA core chips to power the new RTX Titan. But lower core count configuration is also a possibility. Everything depends on how good the chip manufacturing yields are for this particular design. If the yield is not good enough and Nvidia gets very few good chips that can perform well with close to maximum CUDA cores enabled, then it makes more financial sense to keep selling the perfect chips at $7,000 a pop to the data center clients as RTX 6000 ADA cards. In this case, we could see a Titan with just over 17,000 CUDA cores instead. GPU core clock speed is another thing to consider. It will most certainly be higher on RTX Titan compared to RTX 4090. The boost could be as high as 3 GHz. Paired with faster memory, this will be the perfect recipe for the insane level of performance I showed you earlier. And that is how Nvidia can achieve this performance. Although there is no indication that RTX Titan will come out anytime soon, so I do not recommend waiting for it specifically. Consider getting yourself an RTX 4090 if you are in the market for the most powerful graphics card. As for the price, I don't see why this Titan would cost less than $3000. It would be a Halo product for gamers, and in addition to that, I am sure that professionals would also jump on the opportunity to grab an alternative to the $7000 RTX 6000 ADA graphics card. Actually, this is the reason why I think Nvidia may not launch the RTX Titan after all. 
Surely the company wants to make as much money as possible and it just does not make sense to give that $4,000 discount to clients who would otherwise buy an RTX 6000 ADA card. I think that it makes more sense to launch RTX 4090 Ti with 24GB of memory instead. But that is a topic for the next video, so subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to get notified when that video comes out. And if you enjoyed this video, then you know what to do. It was I, Vadim, until next time.